Hello everyone, back to you again to today's final final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next day to 14 days for today's final video. Day cam will take us to the 23rd of April and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SNA GFS and ECM ensembles because may run to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us to early May. I shall get on back for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video today was 6 a.m. upload and we've also released the European Outlook. Check out those two videos if you'd like to be out. Like, share, subscribe on the vids. And thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. I am full of a cold today, so uh, I may be sniffling and uh, coughing my way <coughs> through uh, uh, through uh, this uh, video. So uh, bear with me, everyone. Right, let's start off with the central England temperature. The CT is currently still sitting at 8.2, which is 0.3 of a degree. Um, above average as visual yesterday to the 12th of April. Um, that will hold steady, I think, around around that sort of uh, mark for the next couple of days. So it will start to lift up later on in the weekend and uh, through next week. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is at the 30 year upper air temperature average for rugby, and we're starting off close to average or a little bit below at the moment. We're going to go above average through the weekend. I made a nice mild spell setting up through the third week of April, which of course we've been talking about quite a bit recently with the generally above average temperatures. Signs of a cool down as we get towards the closing stages of the month. There's a little bit of scatter within that. So you'll notice the thick green line, which is the GFS 6 z operation run, actually goes quite cold again through the third week of April. It does lift things up for a while, and then it quickly sort of cools things down. Uh, is an outlier. Well, it's not necessarily an outlier, but it's certainly at the coolest end of the range. Most of the uh, ensemble members are actually significantly uh, milder than that. Precipitation-wise, we've still got a few more uh, days of uh, showers and longer spells of rain to go over the next uh, couple of days. But then we're into a drying trend through the weekend and into next week. Possibly the final week of April turns a little bit more unsettled. <coughs> Excuse me, temperature anomalies from the 13th to the 21st of April, coming out a little bit below average for England and Wales, near normal for Scotland and also for Ireland. And precipitation anomalies from the 13th to 23rd of April, they're coming out drier than normal. The latest wind from, from Earth, Nolschool.net, shows that we've got low pressure sitting over and to the east of the country today, more low pressure is in the Atlantic. However, we have got a break through there, another break through there, and generally a higher pressure is starting to get going now in the Atlantic, and that will be the trend through uh, to the weekend and into next week. So this is the latest UK Met Euro run uh, for a Sunday, 16th of April. We've got a ridge of high pressure building through the country and heading up towards Scandinavia. And so into the open next week, we generate a large area of high pressure across Scandinavia. We pull in an easterly wind, so it won't necessarily be a heat wave. It should be quite mild and pleasant, but with an easterly wind, probably bring cloud into the south of the east at times. A little bit of a chilly feel um, with those easterly winds. The main thing is, though, that it is a significantly drier scenario. Icon again is building up that ridge through the weekend into an area of high pressure through the early part of next week. That high pressure sits over Scandinavia, brings in that easterly wind through the second half of uh, next week. That wind will probably drag in quite a lot of cloud with it and uh, we'll have a bit of a cool feel. You have got areas of low pressure just out to our west, southwest that will be trying to come in against that high pressure, probably possibly bringing some showers or longer spells of rain into either southwestern England by next Thursday, but of course that's a long way off. The GFS Midnight Run again has that ridge of high pressure taking over through the weekend and into next week. A large Scandinavian high in control of weather bringing in that long fetch east wind. If you follow the ice above that, winds go a very long way east. So if that was the 19th of January rather than the 19th of April, we really would be feeling uh, the chill there. But, uh, you know, the only ship of beast probably. But it is April, so it's not going to be cold. It will, however, have a chill to it. I think that easy wind, and that's especially so for more southern and eastern parts of the country. 
Uh, and we get towards um, the end of next week, still maintaining that area of high pressure to uh, over and to the east of the country. Up to day 10 and beyond, the high pressure starts trying to move up towards Scandinavia and we pull uh, towards Ice and Green, I should say, and we pull some colder air down from the north into Scandinavia. Now we're just on the periphery of that cold air. So if that high pressure goes any further northwards towards Greenland, we might actually bring down some cold air into the final week of uh, April. That would be one to watch, but it doesn't happen on this GFS run. What happens is the high pressure just gradually weakens. It starts to turn a little bit more showery, albeit still relatively mild, up to the end of April. That gets us to Saturday the 29th. Uh, right, okay, with GFS 6 there, yeah, we know this one's going to go colder, so let's see what happens. High pressure again, reaching through the country over the weekend, forming an area of high pressure over Scandinavia. Classic Scandinavian high for the early part of next week, bringing the wind from an easterly direction. There is still a bit of a chill with that easterly coming into the south and the east in particular, no such issue uh, further north. Um, then the high pressure sort of goes into retrogression and heads towards Greenland and Iceland as low pressure starts to form over the country. Over the country, we begin to pull down a colder north northeasterly. So around days nine and ten, this gets us to and just beyond it, this gets us to the twenty fourth of April. We've actually gone quite cold here and unsettled with low pressure bringing further rain with it. And uh, also potentially, uh, you know, something a little bit more wintry maybe for the far north of the country with those chilly, cold north north east winds. High pressure then comes back in to the country as we get towards the end of the uh, GFS 6 Zebra. It's over uh, the uh, UK cuts off that northerly, but probably still on the cool side, especially so at night. Remember, that was a little bit of a cold outlier, though. If you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We thank you so much, everybody, uh, for <coughs> for doing that. <coughs> I'm so sorry once again. Okay, so uh, GM has high pressure reaching through the country and going up to northern Europe through the weekend into the early part of next week. High pressure takes over across Scandinavia. Classic Scandinavian high with an easterly wind that brings chilly air into the south and the southeast through the second half of next week um, with the GEM. And we actually get a little area of low pressure forming there, bringing showering conditions. So just how much is it settling down? If we go through these charts, there is a little bit of a, a doubt here about just how long this small settled weather going to last, well, particularly so for England and Wales, actually, less so for Scotland, as you're closer to the blocking area of high pressure there. But for England and Wales, there's a bit of a question mark here with some of these models, actually, for next week, I think. How mild will it get? How long will it stay mild before it starts pulling down those easy winds? And we'll start actually generating some rain in the south and south east um, on those easterlies. And then the ECM again showing the high pressure ridging through the country and going up to Scandinavia through the early part next week for an area of high pressure with a classic Scandinavian high and easterly wind bringing, bringing, bringing in relatively cool air to the south and to the southeast maybe at times. The wind then turns southerly. As we go to days 8, 9, 10, high pressure sort of slips east towards low pressure out to west. That might bring some showery weather into the north and west, but the main thing with that is we're drawing up some quite warm air from the south. So actually the ECM out of all of the model output, probably uh, the warmest for next week. This is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometro.com. More showery conditions to come tonight and tomorrow for England and Wales. But after that, we should be going drier with that ridge of high pressure forming through the country. It develops into a Scandinavian high with bringing easy winds. Um, that suggests some showers, you know, through... Um, uh, through next week being brought in on those east winds, probably quite a lot of cloud uh, as well. And then we get to a day 10, wind turns southerly, so I get a few showers out west, still mostly dry elsewhere, and temperatures would be lifting up. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. It will go to the 23rd of April, 15 members of the ECM. Ensembles have high pressure over to the east of the country, low pressures out to west. So it should be quite a bit of dry weather with that and uh, relatively mild or warm. That does include the control and the operation run. 14, again, with high pressure 
to our south and east low pressure out in the Atlantic. That could be a little bit more showery, especially for the west, but should be quite warm again. 13 with a blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and low pressure to our west southwest. High pressure down southeast. A lot going on with that. We tried to bring in some colder air from the north into the northern half of the country and also trying to bring milder and also unsettled weather in from off the Atlantic there. And then we've got another nine with a mid-Atlantic ridge and a blocking area of high pressure trough over Scandinavia. This is more like what the GFS 6 said is doing. That will be turning uh, colder and potentially a little bit more unsettled as well, actually. I mean, to the time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 28th of April. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry, sorry, once again, everyone. Uh, 28 members of the ECM are samples with an area of high pressure over and to west of north. We're actually mostly dry about, but could be a little bit chilly with winds coming down from a cool northerly direction. 14 looking unsettled with a blocking area of high pressure and low pressure underneath it, so that's turning cool and unsettled. And then we've got nine with high pressure to our north and north east, low pressure to our southwest. That's going to be bringing a lot of dry weather in and quite warm as well. That's the warmest option of the three, I think, with a southeasterly flow, although that area of low pressure to our west and southwest could be threatening some uh, showering conditions. CFS V2 finally, and then we're done. Meets a 500 millibar height anomalies breaking down into wheat pairs. The first wheat pair will take us from the 13th to the 19th of April. The coming week will have a ridge of high pressure building through the country and going up to Scandinavia. So, a lot of dry weather to come in the week ahead. Week two will be the 20th to 26th of April. High pressure is in the North Atlantic, then, so away to our north and northwest. Low pressure down. Uh, off the coast of Spain and Portugal. Should still be a lot of dry weather with that, but could be a bit on the coolish side with wind tend to come in more from a north easterly or northerly type direction. Week three is going to be the 27th of April to the 3rd of May with high pressure away to our northwest, and that could bring in the wind from quite a cool sort of northerly type direction. Certainly doesn't look like it would be a heat wave. And then week four is going to be the 4th to the 10th of May with low pressure coming back to our north, high pressure going more towards the Canadian side of Greenland. And we have got some high pressure over Central Europe. A lot going on with that. So the high pressure over Central Europe will be trying to bring up warmer air up the western side of Europe probably. Um, however, we are also trying to bring in a northwesterly flow between the high pressure and low pressure up there. And so anything is possible, uh, really, uh, with that. Unless it's four weeks away, I don't think it's worth worrying about. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And we thank you all so very much, everybody, um, for doing that. Uh, right, okay, so just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. Uh, as long as I can uh, got my voice, so that doesn't go uh, overnight. But uh, coming up tomorrow, we'll have a 6 a.m. upload, hopefully, and Jeremy Friday and a 10 to 14 day at as well you enjoy the rest of your Thursday and for this one that's all for now and thanks for watching